Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we are going to talk about painting black armor. So, uh, obviously with the new Slaves to Darkness as well as perhaps the Sisters of Battle uh, all, all either here or on the horizon depending on when you're watching this or in the past. Uh, black armor is very much in vogue. Everyone's wearing black this season. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to paint it. I'm actually going to take you through two completely different methods. One I'll call the speedy method. Uh, if, you're, if you've got a whole lot of stuff you need to knock out fast, I'm going to show you how to get fast, quick, uh, tabletop ready black armor in it, but it'll still have a really nice amount of contrast to it. And then we're also going to do more detailed black armor. So we're going to split those up into two sections. Uh, they'll be time stamped below so you can go down there and click to it if you feel like it. Uh, but here we have a Chaos Pony. This is uh, obviously a Knight's Chaos of, of uh, the Chaos Knights. This is Steed. And this is the old one, not the new one. And so I thought, what a perfect guy, since I've got a couple of these still lying around, what a perfect way to do it in advance of the new stuff. As of the time of recording this, I don't have all my new chaos stuff yet. So this guy has been Zenithold in the standard method. That is to say, he was black gray, and then gray, and then white from above. Nothing too crazy. And then back here on the back, I went back in and I just did a couple coats of uh, Abaddon black from Citadel, uh, which is a nice satin black, uh, just to, to, cause I'm gonna show you a more detailed method and I needed to have that blacked out. But we're gonna start up here on his little pony head. Let's talk about the paints on the palette. First off, right there, Abaddon Black, aforementioned. Right next to it, although it looks the same, it's not. We've got some Dalla Rowney uh, Payne's Gray FW ink. We follow that up with some Vallejo model color dark sea blue. And then over here on the side, we have some Reaper Maggot White. Okay, let's, before I get into the actual painting, we're going to just talk about the fundaments of highlighting black. For black to look like black, it needs to be at least 50% and preferably 60% of the surface should be black. But that still leaves you 40 to 50% of the surface to play with in other not black colors. And we need to do something with that to make that visually interesting. If you look at this bottle of black paint here, you can see how much of it is reflecting my lights from above. Right now that's kind of a plastic thing on the outside, so it's very shiny, but I can pick up 10, you know, different things. How about the how about the tip of that cap? Again, notice how much of it is reflecting other colors, getting polluted by light from what's around in the room and so on and so forth. When you highlight your black, don't use white. That's the temptation. You want to go straight to white. Don't do that. Uh, it will only, one, white goes chalky easily. It's harder to manage. Two, it will make it less visually interesting because you're already dealing with a not color in black. Black is the absence of color. It is boredom in paint form. Okay? So how are we going to make it more interesting? Well, maybe we're going to use a green white, like maggot white. Maybe we're going to use a blue white, like uh, Vallejo Glacier Blue. Maybe we're going to use uh, maybe we're going to use a warm yellow white like ice yellow from Vallejo. By the way, these aren't these are just examples. Any bright color like this would work. Maybe we're going to go real crazy and we'll use something like a salmon rose. Uh, so this is like a very lightish flesh tone, which can also add interesting shades of red since the blacks actually tend to be made from uh, blues and so are naturally cold. This can add more warmth into your highlight or mid tone. The point is pick something interesting for your highlight. Don't just use white, okay? All right, so we're all on the page with that. We all agree. Cool. So let's uh, let's do the speedy method. So speedy method first. We're gonna start with a little bit of our Payne's Gray, or sorry, our Payne's Gray and our Dark Sea Blue. So we're gonna take some of that Dark Sea Blue. We're gonna pull it up here on the palette. And we're gonna take a little bit of that blue blank ink. We're gonna mix it in there so we get a nice mix of the two. We're going to grab some water, get that in there. We want to get this nice and thinned down because we're going to work it into a glaze. And if you have any questions about glazing, you can go see my how to glaze video. Uh, that will be your guide. OK, and we're going to take some. I've got some master medium, which is what I just showed the cap of uh, from Green Stuff World. It's a really nice medium I like for thinning paints. You can use glaze medium from Vallejo. You can use uh, you know, Lamia medium, whatever you want, okay? Does not matter. 
So I'm just using a mix of that and water. So let's get that over here. We'll make kind of two different consistencies of it. One that's very thin and one that isn't. So now I've got two different piles at two different levels of thickness, uh, two different levels of coverage. And we can test that as always by taking our hand. We'll take a little bit of that and put it on there and you see, okay, that's about what we get out of it. So it's still got a nice medium tone to it. Let's take this one, the very weak one. You see that one's super weak, perfect. Okay, so again, this is the speed tone. So here we go. We're gonna start with the uh, middle one here, the, the sort of middle tone. Sorry, that's really reflecting my light where it's sitting. That's my overhead light, so. At any rate, we get some of that up in our brush. As always, when we're glazing, most important step is we wick off the excess over here. Can't have a bunch of paint flooding the zone. We're gonna go ahead and hit the tops of his head here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start, I'm gonna assume the highlight kind of goes like this around the backside. So I'm gonna start there and I'm gonna pull toward where I want the shadows. Okay. Just a nice quick glaze, pull it right down there with that blue tone. Easy peasy, right? Nothing too complicated so far. Let that glaze dry, which takes just a few seconds because they're fast, right? Uh, if you have different color things, so like up here where you'd say the darkest part would be at the top, we'd pull toward the top. You're always pulling toward your deepest shadow, okay? Because that's where it's gonna deposit the most paint. All right, once that first layer of glaze is dry, we go get a second one. Again, we wick off all our excess, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing yet again. We're just gonna pull it right down toward the shadows. I'll cover just slightly less. It's still basically just the same thing. Just pulling it toward the shadows. Okay. Easy, all right. So now we let that one dry for a second. Two quick glazes, no problem. Slap it on there. Bing, bang, boom. Now we're gonna take a little bit of that Payne's Gray ink. We're gonna bring it over here. We're gonna grab a little bit of that Abaddon Black. We're gonna mix it in there. So we want a little bit of a mix of both leaning toward the Payne's Gray. I'm gonna grab some water, thin that out. That ink is very pigment rich, so we've gotta we've got be aggressive with it. We're gonna grab a bunch of our medium. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna do the same thing again. You'll see why I'm making a thinner one here in a moment, okay? Now again, same thing. I've got one real thick, one pretty thin. Awesome. Or sorry, thick is the wrong word. It's an ink-based thing, it's not thick. One still that's gonna provide decent coverage, one that's going to be very, very wispy. Um, okay, and again, same thing. We test on the back of our hand. So we'll start with the heavier one. We wick it off, let's give that a shot. Nice, good level of, of darkness we want. And then we test the lighter one. You can see that difference there. Perfect, exactly what we need. Okay, grab our medium one here. Yet again, as always with our glazes, and look how much of that just wicks right off of there, right? Easy peasy. Bring up our horse again, where he's all nice and dry. And now we're gonna start about 50% down. Remember the 50 to 60% rule. We're just gonna pull that darkness right into the shadows. And here on this part, I'm just gonna pull it straight up. We're trying to get that nice dark black to be gathering in these areas. If you're having trouble hitting a spot, you can always rotate it a little. Just get that nice and spread out, nice and smooth. Okay. All right, so you can see, then we're gonna let that dry. Get another layer of that. Now that that, and glazes dry real fast, that's the advantage. Same thing again, about the same amount of space. Pull down in there, always pulling toward the spot. We want to deposit the paint. By the way, if you have an airbrush, you can do this all with an airbrush if you're comfortable. So if you have like a bigger area you're doing, you can do this exact same technique with just airbrush glazing. And it actually becomes real easy, real fast. Cause you can, you can just really control it down. Okay. All right, so now that's where we're at. 
Easy peasy so far. Finally, take a little bit of that medium straight in. We're gonna go right into our black. We're just gonna get it flowing with the medium. We'll still grab a little bit of ink just for coverage, but we're mostly leaning toward black this time. Okay. And then once again, here's our horse. And we're gonna just go ahead and in that bottom area there, we're gonna apply that more or less full black. Okay. So now we got that nice, dark, deep area there. So you can see, it just looks like black with an ultra high reflection. And if I went around and sort of did the same thing up here, like if I black out this top part so, you, so you're not getting your eye, sorry, polluted by the extra white, you'll see actually how different it looks. Right? That's one of the interesting things about something like this is that your eye is very sensitive to other colors being around and so will will notice like if there's a bunch of white up here it won't look as dark but you can see once i darkened the top part look how much more like black armor that looks just instantaneously okay all right you're now you're probably asking yourself but vince for why did you have the maggot white oh what an excellent question imaginary viewer your final step is we come in here we grab a little bit of whatever's left of our medium take some of that maggot white you can do this with some flow improver if you've got as well or just a steady hand because you're going to come in and you're going to just very carefully hit those edges nice and light we're going to recatch every one of those edges the interesting thing about using colored whites is that even to the eye they'll still appear as mostly white like when put against a very dark color like this. Your eye isn't actually very good at disambiguating that color consciously. It just knows that like it's seeing something that's more visually interesting. So then we just catch every edge of the armor. We want to especially make sure we get these bottom edges here. The opposite of the, sort of the opposite of the, the darkest part because it will look, the black will look darker if set against a little tiny sliver of light. Um, as all things, like contrast is king. And when you screw up your edge highlighting like I just did, because I'm doing this at an odd angle where I dragged a little bit of paint, it's no big deal. Just let that dry. Let me go grab a little tiny bit of our black paint. If you saw one of my you saw my edge highlighting video, you know one of the secrets to edge highlighting is not to stop with just the edge, but whenever you make a mistake, you go back in and you just clean it up. All right, so there we go. We got a nice, easy blend. Looks like this highly reflective black armor, uh, and you're easy. If you want to add some more color, this is where the very light color uh, blue glaze comes in you can come in with this, which is just a nice light filter that has almost no impact. And you can sort of take it over everything. And it'll just add this nice blue tint to everything. Because it's just a light filter. And there you go, now you got a little bit of color in there too. Because it'll actually show a little more with the dark sea over the whatever you have there. That's your speed method. To me, it's super fast, and I think it actually gives you a great looking result. Like, when I look at that, I think that, yeah, that looks like super reflective armor that you spent a long time on doing blends. But of course, we didn't. We spent like eight or nine minutes doing blends, and, you know, they were just quick lasers, and I could have done the whole horse, and it would have been easier because every layer would have definitely been dry. So, that's your speed method. Now we're going to move to the horses behind. And we're gonna look at the uh, lengthier method of doing black armor where you want it to be really high highlighted and smooth blends and contrast and stuff like that. So I'm gonna pause here while I reset my palette. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. We're ready to do the more detailed version. So right up here, 
You can see we had our speed paint area. You can see how that reflection looks. I went ahead and did a more detailed version off screen so you can see kind of the idea of having this softer fade. And you can see how in this version, it's more soft in the way it smooths out. And I could still probably glaze that back more. Whereas here, there's a little bit of roughness to it. But let's talk about the techniques we can employ. So here on the other side of the horse, I've got this part just ready and blacked out, and this part I'm starting normal. Down here on the palette, we have some ice blue. We have, uh, so that's, or sorry, Glacier Blue from uh, Vallejo. We have some Salmon Rose, from, also from Vallejo. We've got some Dark Sea Blue from Vallejo. We've got a little Dollar Rowney FW Payne's Gray ink. And finally, some Abaddon Black. Okay. So we can start from a black base coat or not. It doesn't really actually matter. And let's talk about why black is super challenging to work with. When you're trying to do a detailed blend, something like this, you're going from black to white. So you're literally crossing the highest amount of contrast. And you're trying to do it in a very small amount of space because remember, let's say 60% of the thing still needs to be black in color, right? Because if it's not, it won't read as black. Like if I if I spread that white and blue out and only this much of the thing in below was black, it wouldn't read as black. This would just read as a dark shadow then, right? So we have to keep the majority of the area in that dark color or something approximating it. So like either black or blue black. You know, when I say it has to be black, I don't mean it has to be the exact uh, darkest tone. Like you have to use some kind of this paint something like a very dark black, black green, black brown, black red. You can use a lot of those colors and you can still always be infusing color in and it will sell. It'll still look right. The key is that 60% number. The second thing I wanna talk about is just the concept of blending this stuff out. This sort of uh, challenge that black presents us requires us to do <clears throat> potentially a lot more blending than anything else. And there are a million ways to blend. We could wet blend it out. We can uh, use some loaded brush. We can do all sorts of things. And the answer is sure, all of those work. I see a lot of people get lost sometimes in the technique. They get tripped up because they're like, oh, that's great. Did you wet blend that? What kind of blending did you use? I used all of them. I used every kind of blending all at once and whatever was appropriate. And I don't think about it. I'm not like, I don't sit down and go, Hmm, shall I wet blend this? Or will this be a project for a loaded brush? No, you just, you throw, we're throwing paint at it. So you can use any of those techniques and they will work, any of them. There is no right, uh, there's no right correct method of blending for this. It's about the way you apply it consistently. So let's talk about the simplest way we could begin this, which is your good old fashioned layering. So let's just pick a few of these head spots up here We'll start by turning them black, okay? Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna do one little coat of it, even though, because it'll leave it somewhat uh, transparent, and that's okay. If we're gonna go for the layering technique, it's the easiest thing to do, okay? Our idea here is we're just gonna put, you know, sort of shingles on a rooftop type of thing. And again, I want the light gathered up here and towards the back, right? So then I'm gonna go into my ink, my blue black ink. And in this case, I'm going to get everything except that very line against the bottom because this still looks rather dark and still will read as black to people. You can actually see when it's glossy and wet, it looks darker. That's another interesting part about black that I'll mention here just as we're letting that dry. If you have something like you can see here, let's go ahead and I'll apply some of this blue black ink, which is not true black, to over the black. Notice how all of a sudden when it's wet, this part seems darker than this part. This is a lighter color than this, but this seems darker, okay? That's because the glossiness, the nature of the shine in black will make it appear a deeper black like that when you see that paint that's like the blackest black on the market let's i have hyper matte so it actually ends up often looking kind of gray depending on what's going on but either way it looks devoid of visual interest um so 
the point that I'm making here is one of the neat tricks you can do to get really, really dark colors in your deep shadows is you can take like a little gloss medium or something like that, sneak that into your black in the shadows, and it will actually appear darker there than it would otherwise. Okay. All right. So back to the layering. So now we'll take a little bit of our blue black. We'll mix it with some of our dark sea blue, right? And now what we're going to do is again, we're just going to come up toward the edge there. Easy peasy, nice little first layer. Now what we do is let's prepare the rest of this run. I'm going to grab a bunch of dark sea blue, a bunch of blue black. Let's mix that all in. I've got some medium over here on the other side of my palette we'll use. Okay. All right, great. So now let's go ahead and get some of that over here, make a second pile, and let's bring some of that salmon rose in. Probably a little too much. The key is we want to do these small steps. There we go. Nice. Let's lay down another one there. Bring in a little bit more of that rose. Let's lay down a new pile off of that. Bring in a little bit more and let's start adding in just a touch of that ice blue as well or that glacier blue as well. Start fading it out. Let's go here and then let's go like that. And then let's do one more. If I was actually preparing to paint a whole thing, by the way, I would make these much bigger. But since I'm just doing a tiny little part. So now you can see, shoop, 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 I've got all my steps. Awesome. Okay. So now we're just going to come in and we're going to say, take some of our first lighter step here. And we're going to draw up and right toward the edge there. Okay. Now, when you're doing this kind of layering, it's always going to look a little bit, um, you're always going to be able to see lines when you make these jumps. It's one of the tricks with black. And then we're going to take a slightly lighter color, cover even a little bit less. I'll talk about how we fix that in a moment, don't worry. Then we go to our next lighter step. Cover a little bit less. I think you get the idea here. Then we take our next color. Now we're covering very little indeed. All right. And then finally, we throw our paintbrush around like a crazy person. We go to our highest highlight here. And we're gonna get just that little corner space right and then just as before we need to take our uh, brightest bright color which is this glacier blue and we're gonna make sure we have the edge nice and oops didn't need to do that side Take the edge, make sure it's nice and picked out. We especially want that light right next to the dark. And if we mess up and get some paint in the wrong place like I did there, where I, because I have to hold this at an odd angle, no big deal. We go back to our original black and doop a doop a doop doop. And we just fix that up real quick. And easy, right? Now, if there, if you do have those sort of shingles once everything dries, where you can still see the division lines between them, if you're not totally happy with it, then you go into something like your original sort of mid-dark color. You thin that down into a glaze, just like we did in the last one. Just get that nice and thin. And 
And then again, pulling toward the shadows, you just run a few of those glazes over and you'll just hide that right away. So that's if you wanna go with sort of the traditional layering method and it works, you can build up like that. You also wanna think about, in addition to the edges, you wanna think about things like your, uh, your other things that would catch light. So for example, there's this little rivet right here. We would wanna make sure we picked that out with a little highlight, right? Because the light effect will sell more if I can see it having a normal effect on everything. I could do little scratches and dots or something. You know, there's there's always lots of different things you can do, but the more you kind of add a little bit of confusion, of texture, of other light elements there, the more it will it will sell. Okay. Now, if you're don't if you're not the layering type, and you say, but Vince, there has to be a quicker way. Well, sure there is. Of course. Instead of doing that all slow. Let's just do it all fast. Let's go ahead and black the whole thing out. We will get a heavy amount of uh, paint here. Abaddon's a base paint, so it's got a decent amount of weight to it. Then let's just go straight into the blue. Pull that up. Have a little bit more of that. Straight into our lighter color. And then let's jump way up here to the top. Let's go all the way. Okay. We get that real high reflection. And we clean the paint off the brush and while everything's still wet, we just slowly feather it all together. Then we just let that rest. You can see we can get that same effect, you know, pretty fast. I don't quite have the same dark darks because some of my lighter colors got into my darker colors. So here what I would do is I would just let that paint dry. We just let it rest out, just like we always do when we're in a situation like this. And that same dark glaze, let's take that nice black color we had, a little Abaddon black. We'll thin that down. And then we're just going to pull right down toward the shadows. We can clean the brush on a wet piece of paper, or we eat the paint if you're that kind of person. Then we just feather the end a little bit. And boom, now we've got this wonderful reflection. Once again, same second verse, same as the first. We knock out our, our edge and make sure that's well defined because it really is the edge that sells it. Make sure that rivet's caught. All right. And there we go. We got this nice, smooth thing pretty fast. Again, we could have done that with loaded brush if you're more comfortable with that. The other thing you can do here is in some places you can have secondary reflections. So for example, you know, here I've got the lighter color up top getting caught. If you want to get a little, if you want to get a little exciting, you can take a little bit of say, uh, the dark sea blue over here. And we could place a little bit of that actually down here on the bottom to just kind of show a little bit of a counter reflection or a secondary reflection in the black. Let's grab a little bit of that white. We'll kick that up just enough so it's visible. We get just a little bit of, of this sort of L-shaped reflection in here so it goes from like dark to light to dark. Not necessary, but it can be an interesting way to add extra tone. And then, you know, we go back into the black. We kind of smooth out that edge around that.
just that kind of thing. Little bits of color that you can make it visually interesting. You can do all the same thing I just did over the black itself. So for example, here, we could do the same thing with the layers. You know, we could take from the blue itself, sorry, take from the blue itself. We could say, okay, this area is gonna be highlighted. So we're just gonna lay down a bunch of that blue. And then we could just go straight through and wet blend it through all of our layers. Grab a lighter one, grab a lighter one. Grab a lighter one. Grab the lightest, right? And just work our way through that whole lot. And then just same thing again. Kind of bring that all together. And we can jump into that black at the edge. Throw a little version of that on there. And then just bring the two together. Right. And then again, we just let that sit and then we glaze and ba boom, we'll be good to go. So there you go. If you want to do the more detailed black, it's, you know, it, you, what, what you end up getting is a slightly richer effect. They don't look terribly different at the tabletop level. Um, you can do all this with the airbrush, like I've said many times. Like I could go back and just do this whole thing I just did with the airbrush, like tiny little colors and stuff like that. So. I, I would recommend that you use the way that you're most comfortable with, but I hope that gave you some good ideas for how to get this shiny black armor. Uh, the, the kind of things that you would see on, um, you know, on Sisters of Battle or on the Warriors of uh, the Chaos Gods on, of the Undivided, right, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I, I do hope this gave you some thoughts there as to, it's not hard, it's often just time consuming. The, I want to review just the biggest things about this. The biggest deals are one, don't limit yourself to just white as a highlight. In fact, avoid it if you can. Look at something like your Glacier Blue or your Salmon or your Ice Yellow or the Maggot White I used in the Speed version, whatever. Some kind of light color with, with an actual color in it. <laughs> Some light hue that actually has color to it, right? Uh, remember that for your surface to appear black, 60%-ish of your surface has to appear black or near enough that the human eye will believe it is, right? So you, and you have to, you can push that around with things like these glazes where you get that slowly, slowly, slowly tinted down. Glossy black will appear darker than matte black, so you can hide a little bit of satin or gloss in the deepest shadows. Uh, and any blending technique will work, but you're going to need to blend. You saw here how on this side I just did traditional layering, and these two I did wet blending, and now they pretty much look identical. It doesn't matter which way you blend, it just matters that you do that, uh, because you need to run that whole gamut in a very short amount of space. If you don't want to go all the way up to white, as I did here, uh, like if you don't want your people to be this highly reflective, let's say you want to stop a little shy and you often see this in a lot of the box art where it'll only go up into sort of a blue range and then kind of like a, almost a mid blue and then stop. I would still run this whole thing just like I did. And then I would actually just glaze back over it. So for example, we could take a little bit of our, uh, our dark sea blue here. Work that down to a glaze and then we can just go over everything right and then bring that back into tone and that can be a nice way to kind of bring all your colors together it will also make sure that uh that there's nothing too out of whack it'll it'll bring all your blends together and it'll soften that reflection it'll make it look like it's more of a subtle more matte surface that's just kind of reflecting a bit of color so there you go that's painting shiny black armor uh i do hope you enjoyed that if you did give it a like uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got questions or suggestions for future topics, feel free to drop those down in the comments. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.